tomorrow. So the market seems to be showing some kind of recovery in Kenya. I mean, experts are basically saying it had reached the bottom of the trough. And at this stage, there's nowhere else but up. Um, how would you assess the market? How would you play the market? I think uh, it's, it's a bit premature to say that we've bottomed out, especially on the fact that uh, we're still to see the pass-through effects of uh, the currency on inflation. And we could actually see inflation rising. And on the back of tightening liquidity by the CBK, that will result in higher interest rates, where we are not yet sure that uh, the, the market has bottomed out. And right now, maybe what we, what we saw with, uh, could be some profit taking on the back of uh, this week's gains. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's, it's too early to say that we've bottomed out. And we're likely to see a, a bit more, uh, some, a slight drop or stabilization mm -hmm. at this rate. Yeah. All right, uh, stabilization is also something that's being sought for the Kenyan shilling. Uh, we saw it in the 99 shilling range at 100, so it's looking stronger than it's been in recent weeks, but still under pressure. But as Mashudu said, you know, um, those who are in the currency trade taking advantage of a better shilling to get into the market for forex trading. Um, what do you think is going to happen to the currency? What's your outlook for the shilling? I think... Uh I was happy with what the finance minister did last week and he came and uh, brought the CBK and the bankers together and uh, kind of mended that harsh, those harsh undertones that were between the CBK and bankers. And I think that's what led to the small rally in the shilling. Going forward, uh, I think once banks uh, mend their exposure limits to the 10% that the finance minister suggested, we're likely to see importers coming back because there's still a lot of import demand. And probably, I, I think it will be a while before we see now a serious rally because as today showed, we're not yet out of the woods. So going forward, I think there's still a, a small pressure on the shilling and uh, especially from importers. Okay, let's talk about the drivers of the market today. Obviously, Kenya Power is a company to look at. People had expected a gloomy um, look at uh, outlook for for the company based on uh, what they believe is going to be subdued profit growth we have seen profits they're coming in at 11 percent a dividend is being paid lots of conditions that are absolutely affecting a utility provider obviously with inflation rising tariffs what are your expectations going forward i think first of all with the current results you must remember that uh, these results are for the year ended june 30th and uh, a lot of the things that have happened post that are not reflected, post June 30th are not reflected in the results. Going forward, I'm a bit, I'm a bit optimistic about the counter because of one thing, I mean two things. The first one is that uh, it's, it's hedged against foreign exchange and fuel prices through the, because they have the ability to pass on those costs to the customers. And secondly, once uh, we've seen the rains improve uh, in the final quarter of the year, and uh, that will mean that come Q1 next year, uh, we'll move to, hydro mm -hmm. to the hydropower sources, and that will mean that it has less uh, thermal energy. So I think going forward, as long as uh, they're increasing the connections and they're increasing the capacity, they are, they're likely to be post right. better profits. Obviously, a gainer today was Williamson's Tea on the back of this huge commercial property deal. That stock yeah. is up 8.1%, but they've also got other things in their favor. I mean, tea exporters in this market with a weakened shilling are literally the ones who are really benefiting from this market nonetheless. Exactly. I mean, uh, there's, only, there's the weakening shilling and there's also higher tea prices globally. So as a tea company, even without the selling of the commercial property, we are still expected to post good results for the for the period. But also, I mean, with the, the, they sold the commercial property for 500 million shillings, and that's a return of about 50, 56 uh, sh uh, uh, shillings per share, around 25%. So I think, in, I mean, shareholders are sitting pretty at uh, looking at those figures, and I think that's what's driving the mm. rally. So I think there's, there's the commercial uh, property sale, and uh, the general good economics right. for exporters right now. Other gainers in today's session have been uh, Standard Group eight, up 8.7%, 8 and also Equity Bank up 3.9%. I know that volumes have been thin in general, but uh, what would uh, have an influencing variable on the prices here? I think, first of all, Standard, standard Group, it's really hard to tell because it's, it's trading on thin margins. and. Uh, as we've noticed in the, the recent weeks or the recent few months, it's been a case of gaining, 
one day and losing the next day. So I don't think there's much to read into standard group. With equity, I think uh, it could have bottomed out. And uh, I mean, the liquidity issues are not, are not expected to affect e equity as much because they have a wide deposit base and they, they don't really d depend on wholesale funds as some other banks do. So I think that's, that's what could be affecting investors right now because equity, right. equity is, is, a, is a mass, mass market. Yeah. Okay, a big mover today, uh, at least it accounted for 91% of the shares traded to be expected. Safaricom, but still trading uh, at uh, three shillings and five cents. Um, where's the value for an investor coming into Safaricom? I know it's a highly capitalized stock, so it's here to stay, but at these prices? I think going forward, uh, what could be a, a benefit for the company is that uh, if the shilling strengthens, then you're likely to see less, less co I mean, a, a lower cost for their imports, including uh, equipment. So maybe that's one thing that's weighing into investors' minds. And uh, going forward, if, as long as the shilling strengthens, the company will do well. And secondly, you notice with the Safaricom is that uh, if it, 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 it's, it's at a low price, and as an increase of 10 cents would actually be a material mm -hmm. increase for, for a shareholder. So I think that's what attracts investors to Safaricom because a 5 cents uh, increase in the share price is actually significant right. if you're dealing with large volumes.